So we're taking a moment out of Film Talk just to have a look at some of our great film series and this time we're taking a view on the James Bond series and we're asking all of our Film Talk contributors to tell us who they think their favourite James Bond might be, favourite Bond movie, villain, gadget, all those kind of things and we're kind of come up with our favourite from the James Bond franchise. Brian, we're talking James Bond quickly, so who's your, can you remember the name? <laughs> who was your favourite James Bond to start with? I think if I'm, because I enjoy all the Bond movies, again, mm. they're just such great entertainment. If I'm really pushed, I think I would choose Sean, Sean Connery. Really? Do you stand out? Sure, well, Roger Moore is great. Uh, well, they're all great. This is the problem. You, you want a favourite or one of the best, so uh, I think I would choose Sean, if I'm pushed. OK, I'm pushing to, you a little uh, bit, but what is, <laughs> what is it about Sean that makes him stand out, just that little um, bit above... I don't want to say because he was the first one, um, mm. but I think that um, he 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 just carried that kind of um, sort of secret agent fit guy that that he could do it. So you so believed it. It, it. it made you yeah yeah you believe that he could be someone in MI five or something like that. He just seemed that type of you know at the physical presence. Okay. You know, it's good with the gadgets, etc. Roger Moore is is my favourite, and um, uh, you know, like our colleagues, it's probably my age group, uh, having watched him in the seventies in particular. Mm. So Roger Moore epitomises James Bond to me for that period of time, and and for that reason and that reason alone, overall, I, I always regard him as my favourite James Bond. Um, best James Bond. Uh, that's a really tricky, tricky one. Um, I think Daniel Craig is doing a fantastic job. Mm. Uh, I really, Absolutely. really do like yeah. him as James Bond and looking forward to the next one very much. And I love Sean Connery. I actually like Timothy Dalton and even George Lazenby. Um, yeah, I a, liked Lazenby in the role, although his yes. voice was dubbed by George Baker for yes. most of it. And I like that film, actually. I think it's a really good, underrated film. Mm. Um, which make very exciting scenes in that and a great soundtrack as well but great direction from Peter Hunt who was absolutely. editor of many of the earlier yeah correct absolutely uh, movies. absolutely yeah. um, so best James Bond I think it has to be Sean Connery I think a lot of people are going to say that yeah a lot of people are definitely going to say that yeah uh, Roger is, is because it was the first I saw yes. on the cinema screen right. it, I mean I've seen Sean before that perhaps but yes uh, to see at the cinema, mm. Roger, I think most people kind of go with the first one they saw at the cinema. I think that's 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 the point really, and uh, and, and I it's, it is a hard one. I, if if I'd not seen the Sean Connery ones, I probably definitely would have gone with Daniel Craig, and I do love him as James Bond. Mm. But I think overall, I have to say the best one is probably Sean Connery. I'd kind of go with that, but you know what? I'm, I'm saying I still like very much the Daniel Craig because he is the Bond of today. Yes, exactly. And he's very he's right and relevant for yes. this part of the 21st yes. century. So yes, he's brought a lot to the part, definitely. Yeah. So definitely. It's, it's not just recreating the old style Bond, but he's brought it into a new era and really kind of the Bond of the future. Yes, which is how this franchise has kept going. Yes, yes. Interesting. My favourite actor, I think, has mm. got to be Sean Connery as really? Bond. As yes. Well? yes. He's, well, he's Isn't just... no one he going to talk about Roger Moore? That's... No, I don't know. Yeah. Roger Moore. Roger Moore, unfortunately to me, every time I saw Roger Moore in a Bond film, he was just the saint playing Bond. He didn't really sort of change that much. The door is over. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> Sean Corey was really good. He just he just conjured it all up. I know he was the first, so you think, well, that could be the benchmark. But even when he came back and did Diamonds of Forever, he was still pretty good, I think. But hopeless in Never Say Never Again, though. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't a really good, a good film. No. no. Okay. No. Ah, who was the best and who's my favourite? Ah, yes. May not necessarily be the same. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Mm. Who's the favourite? Well, my my personal favourite uh, is Roger Moore. Um, I think it's it's one of those. It's a bit like who's your favourite Doctor Who, and I think it's who you first see and who you grow up with. In Bond, it was Roger Moore. I remember being off school in the holidays and being able to go to the cinema in the days when they'd show a Bond film, but in the afternoon, or the, immediately before they'd show the one before, and I was able to go at 11 or 12 years old, and I saw, for the first time on the big screen, uh, I saw The Man with the Golden Gun, and immediately afterwards it was The Spy Who Loved Me. Wow. And I remember sitting there, 
uh, at the ABC in Hendon. 45 pence it costs. Uh, and I saw both films and I thought, this is fantastic. I loved it. I love the action. I love the humour. I just love the the whole size of it. I hadn't seen many films on the big screen uh, and I loved it. And so I was always a great fan of Roger Moore. I'm not saying some of the later Roger Moore Bonds were some of the best films, but I just think as a as a character, I liked it. I always like people that take things seriously, but not too seriously. I don't mean Roger Moore as an actor, I mean the character. Uh, although Roger Moore, I think, was the same. He never took himself too seriously, mm. which is lovely in an actor, and I've, like yourself, um, had the opportunity uh, to meet him. And so, yeah, I think for me, my favourite my favorite Bond is Roger Moore. But is he the best Bond, though? So what's the difference between a favourite and a best? Well, obviously, I know the difference in the in the description of the words, but... I think that... Because I have to go with Roger Moore because he was the yes. first I saw, like yes. you say. Yes. I, the Spy Who Loved Me was the first one I saw on yeah. the big screen. Yeah. And that had a quite an, an impact on me. So I kind of see Roger Moore as my favourite in that sense. Yes. But, you know, the Daniel Craig performance is is astonishing. Yeah, it is. I have, I like those films and I've watched those recent films with my uh, elder son. Uh, he hasn't seen the early ones. We've got the whole lot on Blu-ray, as probably most of the country have. Mm. Um, and we've watched the later ones, and they're great films, but they come at a time of films like the Bourne films and the Jack Reacher films and those types of modern-day thrillers with excellent effects, with excellent action, with just everything crisp and fast. And it's a different type of cinematic experience, perhaps, to 40, 50 years ago. And I think very very often it's the action and the big scenes that lead the actors and not necessarily the other way around. And we watched Skyfall recently and it blew me away and yet... Did it give me the same warmth that perhaps The Spy Who Loved Me did when I saw it in the cinema? And there's those shots there of Egypt and, and Barry Leon comes in and you've got Barbara Bach and you've got all this just wonderful warmth. The answer is no, it doesn't do it for me in that way. As an action film, yeah, fantastic. Love them. Uh, I still think it's Sean Connery is probably as near to you can get as to the character. And I think they did very well. And when they picked him, he was an unknown at the time. But for me, it's a bit like regenerating Doctor Who. Tom Baker wasn't the first, but he was my favourite. And Roger Moore wasn't the first, but he was my favourite. There are so many gadgets in all of the James Bond movies. What gadget kind of sticks out in your mind as one of the most appealing and the most ingenious? I think the um, the little flying thing. The little the, flying thing. Yeah. The oh, what do they what would they call it? The gyro the gyro <laughs> copter. I had a prompt there from a colleague. <laughs> And I can't yeah. remember how they actually used it, but uh, that was in. I think, you only uh, lived twice. Did it come in a packing case? That's right. It yeah, arrives Q's in a packing case and from M. No, is it? Yeah, M. No, from Q. From Q. That's right. I knew it was a letter. Well, yeah, watched this film. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I watch them, and then you sort of go and make a cup of tea. You know, yeah, you've all, enjoyed them so much. The, so the gyrocopter uh, that came in a packing case from M. It put it in Q, mm. but it was in. You Only Live Twice, which is the one in Japan, which right, is a yeah. great film. Yeah. And Goldfinger. They never, he has that wonderful car, Aston Martin. He uses all the things, but he, he doesn't get away in the end. He ends up crashing it. And you think, what a waste that is. Because that was, would have been my favourite gadget, is Aston Martin. But he, he uses all the effects, gets rid of people out, the, the seat, etc. But um, doesn't actually escape. Still gets and captured. Still gets captured, so it's all a little bit pointless. Actually, the invisible car... Was uh, probably the weakest most, point. Most disappointing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is a baddies gadget. I'm going to have to say it's Scaramanga's golden gun, ah. which was actually a lighter and a pen yes. that actually went together. And uh, if I was going to have any gadget and it was offered any gadget, I'd actually have that one because um, it gave the impression that actually it would work as a gun as well. Mm. And I just love the way that Christopher Lee Scaramanga. And he's actually just got his pen and he's got his lighter with him because he's been searched for a gun. And he manages to put this together in front of him and shoot the baddie. It's that's a, right, that's yeah. Right. yeah. It's a really cool gadget. And it's worth having because it's solid gold too, so yes. it's uh, probably worth yes. a couple of quid. The gadget I'd most like to have would be the magnetic watch that was in Live and Let Die, Live and Let Die where he was able to get the zip down on Madeline Smith's dress. Yeah. Madeline would not mind me saying that because we're we're good friends, but it's probably the best gadget. I think, in, in the, as I said before, one of the first films I saw was The Spy Who Loved Me, and seeing cars going underwater 
was pretty amazing. I mean, nowadays you see things like Top Gear and you see these sort of inflatables and whatever they call them. Yeah. They can't do anything. That's quite, you know, we could probably do that. But to, to take our watch, I think it was a TL7. Was it a TL7? But to take oh, Lotus Esprit. The Lotus Esprit. Lotus Esprit. To see that yes. car and it go underwater. I know it's all, I know it's all smoke and mirrors. I know it's all tricks. I know it's, it's all gadgets because it's all put together because that's what we do in this industry. But it was pretty cool. A car going all the way along, going under the water, coming out the other side and all these people looking. So I think for the sheer spectacle of its time and the, uh, and the surprise of it all, I think a car going uh, underwater, I think it would be the Lotus Esprit from The Spy You Love Me. And a villain. You've got to pick a villain from the series. Villain. Uh, well, you see, I, I keep thinking of Blowfield, but he was played in two films by Donald Pleasance and... Charles Gray, Charles Gray but yeah. he's my favourite character with the cat. He's always stroking his cat, isn't he? He's, he's, he's nasty. He's just a nasty character. Doesn't care about anybody, but then none of them really did. That's true. Said and done. But um, yeah, he's my favourite villain. I'm tempted to say Christopher Lee because ah. I actually met him. Now that's I was, a good reason. I never worked on a picture with him. Um, Phil, I think, worked on a Dracula picture, but I did meet Christopher Lee. Yeah. Um, at Pinewood Studios, 1968. I was 17, and he was filming when Dra uh, Dracula was risen from the grave. Ah, right. We were at uh, a party where Hammer Films won the Queens of Water Industry, so I got him to sign a menu for me. So, um, so yeah, Christopher Lee. I think. I think. You a, a perfect, he's a good villain. <laughs> perfect justification for. Uh, Choosing Man with the Golden Gun. Man with the Golden Gun. Oh, yes. There's a memory. <laughs> Can you remember the character's name? Um, Scaramanga. Scaramanga, yeah, no, of course. There you are. I knew it began with it. <laughs> there you are, Brian. No one had a voice like Charles Gray, oh, who I think yeah. played Blofeld. I mean, he had the most amazing voice. Mm. It was like velvet, and you really, you really feared him. And in fact, his voice was used for Jack Hawkins when Jack Hawkins had the throat cancer, lost his voice right, in the yes. late 60s, and for the next five years until he died, he still appeared in films, and Charles Gray did Jack Hawkins' voice. When Eight Bells Toll. Correct, the, and uh, Monte Carlo Bust, and yeah. Theatre of Death and films like that. But my favourite one is Scaramanga. Christopher Lee, the man with the golden gun. Not because he's got three nipples. That's just Who by hasn't? coincidence. Who hasn't? Well, I haven't at the moment. Um, but it's just... You know what it is? The thing about Christopher Lee, and everyone will tell you, whatever film he was in, whether it was the biggest of the budgets or the lowest, lowest, lowest of the budgets, he took it really, really seriously. Mm. Right? He really did. And you've been told that by people who appeared in Hammer Horror films with him and so on. Absolutely, yes. And there he is. He's suddenly in Bond. Now, it's, it's in, so it's in the early 70s, biggest film franchise before all the other big ones, Lord of the Rings and everything, biggest film franchise in the world. And there he is, standing there, with with a little the little one um, not not odd job that's some carry on screaming with the little one that was played by Herbie Villachez. Um but oh Nick Nack Nick Nack um, but no he was the one Christopher Lee as Scaramanga I really feared him I thought he was he was he was evil but in a way that was believable a lot of them towards the end they get so over the top it's not believable Scaramanga man with the golden gun Christopher Lee actually interestingly it's a it's a it's, there's two of them. It's actually Ulrich Goldfinger. Yeah, yeah. And an odd job. And odd job. Yeah. Both in the same film. Both in the same film. Uh, just just classic great James Bond baddies. Mm. And and I do regard the sort of the, the backup baddie, odd job. And there's a lot of them in the movies as well that you know are actually more threatening sometimes than the actual sort of you know, the, the megalomaniac. Um, but I think that Goldfinger was the first of those sort of big, um, you know, megalomaniac baddies. And I think that Odd Job for me was the, the first of the sort of those henchmen that um, was vicious and, and nasty. And I, it really left a lot, of, you know, in, in my mind about what a baddie should be like. So we've done Favourite Bond. We've done the villains, we've done the gadgets. Is there a bit of music, a Bond music that stands out, a theme song, a piece of music? I think he'd be hard pushed to beat uh, Shirley Bassey singing Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, for me, it's really, really strong. In fact, it's probably stronger than the film. 
for me. It wasn't a great film, was it? Not, not the greatest comeback for Sean Connery. It was, it was still good. It just seemed a bit more violent, a bit more harsh, um, and it didn't quite feel the same, but it's a really powerful piece of music. Uh, and for me, as I say, I think it's probably as strong as the film. So I would go for Shirley Bassey singing Diamonds Are Forever. Favourite music, though, I think, would be um, A Magic Secret Service, because that has definitely got the best soundtrack. It's got the worst Bond in it, with George Lazenby. What? Yes. He was dubbed, though, wasn't he, in, in most know. of that film? I understand. I George Baker. But the soundtrack dubbed. is really great. It's got the best soundtrack, I think. Before we choose a favourite film, but mm. the best, you know, most inspirational or moving or I love, enjoyable music? I love so many of the soundtracks and, and the music. Um, the two songs that stand out to me in particular um, that I really struggle to... to to choose between the two I love Skyfall by Adele I think that's a great song mm -hmm. really really is very good but for me it has to be Nobody Does It Better ah. from some Spy Who Loves Me Spider -Man. because you know that's James Bond Nobody mm. Does It Better and it's uh, and that sums it up you know it's it's a great song really Carly Simon Marvin Hamlish I think he was the writer yes. and uh, composer and it's, uh, it sums up James Bond to me, that, that particular song. And if you had to select one of the Bond films to date, that's the real standout, it's the favourite, it's the best, whatever. I mean, is there a difference between favourite and best Bond film? I don't know. Which no, no, I don't think it is. I think, I think for me, favourite and best of film is the same because favourite and best almost implies I've become a film critic and my film critic hat says it's got to be Spectre, but for me, for personally, it's got to be, I don't know, Goldfinger. I think, for me, favourite and best when it comes to film itself uh, it is the same. So I think I'm going to go for, oh, oh, is it going to be, oh, is it going to be Man with the Golden Gun or is it going to be The Spy Who Loved Me? I'm going to go Man with the Golden Gun. Wow. Yep, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with an early one. A, a terrific film, yeah. very close to the book too. Yeah, but wasn't the biggest box office? No, and I think they were a bit worried about Roger as as Bond. Well, of course, he did the first one in seventy three. They used to do them a year, two years apart. Mm. With him, they wanted to get a couple out quite quickly. So you had uh, Live and Let Die and Man with the Golden Gun with seventy three, seventy four. It was a bit of a rush, perhaps. Um, and so they just tinkered around and waited. And I think I think Spy Love Me was seventy seven, so they waited. And they do that nowadays. They actually wait a lot longer, and they bring them out it's much harder to make nowadays. Mm. I, would, I would assume. Although we say that, but actually, technology being what it is, it was probably just as hard forty years ago. I remember speaking to one of the producers several years ago when I was doing a, a book about Palmer Studios, and they said, "Imagine thirty years ago taking a crew of three hundred people out to a location in the middle of nowhere with no mobile phones, no ways to communicate." So it's probably just as hard to make the films then but for me as I say I think what I like about Man with the Golden Gun is I like Roger's performance um, I like Christopher Lee Britt Eklund's in it it's, it's, it's fun uh, and it's got a good baddie in it so I'll go for Man with the Golden Gun So I have my favourite Bond but he wasn't necessarily in my favourite Bond film ah, I think my favourite Bond I, I actually like the, the Daniel Craig series and I think Skyfall as a film is really good because when you watch the older Bonds they're, they're fun you sometimes go, oh, well, that's a shame. I mean, in Gold, in Goldfinger, they never. He has that wonderful car, Aston Martin. Uses all the things, but he doesn't get away in the end. He ends up crashing it. And you think, what a waste that is, because that was, would have been my favourite gadget. Is Aston Martin, and my favourite film, is Skyfall. But Sean Connery really is the James. He's the James Bond that I think that Ian Fleming conjured up. That's the thing. But people say Timothy Dalton was that. He was good. He was a bit cold in some of his films I think Timothy Dalton that's why people didn't warm to him because he was a mm. bit but he was good he was very sort of straight out of all of the Bond movies if you could pick one I, th I think if I could pick one I think it would be um, and again you'll have to prompt the, the title where they meet the sheriff uh, down in Mississippi, that's or called Live and Let Die. Live and Let Die. You know the chases and that. Yeah. He, his character, you know that comedy character, made it great for me. Because he turns up in the Man with the Golden Gun, which is yeah. Chris Philly, But you first yeah. see that character in Live and Let Die. Yeah, which I'm, is the first so I'm going to choose choose that. Great, Live and Let Die. So you're going to choose Live and Let Die. I am. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And the main reason is for that, that character and all the chases, you know, the, the speedboat uh, 
through, through the Everglades and all that. Must have been a nightmare to shoot. I should think it was. But um, yeah, a lot of action, big big Bond action movie, and that character, I think, wonderful, just swings it for me. Well, I think I've been mentioned on a mention of the Secret Service. I think that's an excellent movie. Mm. I love uh, From Russia with Love, as well. I think that set the scene after Doctor No as to where jo- you know, James Bond was going. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I love The Living Daylights with uh, Timothy Dalton. I thought that was a great movie as well. And, of course, I don't think Daniel Craig's done a bad one, to be honest. I think they've all been good. So really happy with that. But it, for me, <laughs> it's uh, becoming a bit of a, a cliche, but I would say Spy Who Love Me is, mm. is the one. That's yeah. the top one. I thought that's it's a great movie. film. It's an amazing movie. Yeah, nineteen seventy, and the first one that Cubby Broccoli produced on his own, yes. having the partnership with Harry Saltzman being dissolved because Correct. of Harry's financial problems. Yes, but uh, a, a triumph for Cubby because it was mm. huge. Oh, hugely successful. Yes, um, yeah. They, I don't think they expected it to be quite as successful as it was, mm. um, but it, it, you can see why because it's a quality film, really good quality film. Great, Great right. story as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Great, thank you, Mark. So that's our overall summary of the James Bond franchise, of uh, our favourite Bonds, the movies, the music, the gadgets and, and the villains. And It's a fantastic franchise and really it's all terrific. But if you have to pick some favourites, as we've done, that's uh, our contribution for Up For Debate. But uh, come back to us again in future weeks for more editions of Film Talk as we compile our greatest 100 films of all time, certainly in our opinion, which is what Film Talk is all about. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.